so uh, we are at step number 7.1 and this is where we need to start it so we need to define the field status variant before we get this object we need to find out we need to understand this object field status variant means this is the status of the field so we have one ppt let me open that ppt for you so what is the field status variant it is saying that field status variant this object we will be defining at a company code level for the different different company code we can have a different different field status variant so we can maintain the status of our field like at the time of a posting document so user will come across various fields so those field we can manage with the help of this field status variant as suppress required or optional so whenever the user is going to do the posting so for any of the for any of the accounting document we will be having minimum how many line items we will be having minimum two line items and how many maximum line item we can have till the ecc we were having the maximum line item number of line item these were triple nine okay triple nine but in the sap s4 hana the line item has been increased from triple nine to six time nine up to six nine up to the six time line item you can post your accounting document in the sap system then for each of the line item you have been given standard 70 field those 70 field as per your client requirement you can maintain as suppress required option when i'm saying suppress it means that particular field will not be shown by the system to the user while posting the document and required means that particular field will become mandatory without this system will not allow the user to go further Option means it is option. So whether the user is entering or not, so that will not stop the posting. That will not stop the user to do the posting. So you can just see on the left side, we have those kind of fields which we can maintain as suppressed required or option. So these are standard 70 field provided by the SAP. So here I have taken some of them. For the full list, you can also see in the system. And this is called the accounting document so for each of the accounting document at least we need two line item so this is the first line item this is a second line item again here this is the first line item this is a second line item so for each of the line item you will be having the fields and those fields you can manage as suppressed record or optional so you can manage it with the help of these radio button in the system you have been given for each field you have been given the status as suppressed record or option so wherever you will be just putting the radio button, so the status will be changed by the or considered by the system accordingly. If you consider, if you do the, like if you select the radio button for this text and business area as suppress, so what will happen at the time of posting the document, so these two fields will not be shown on the screen. Then if you select this cost under and tax rate as a required, then Without these two fields, we will not able to post the document. And if the quantity field is optional, then this is up to us if we want to enter it. Without this also, we'll be able to post the document. Okay, this is the field status control we have. Now, what is the structure of the field status variant? So let me just show you the structure of the field status variant. So first, we need to maintain the field status variant, which we have understood that we maintain at a company code level. We define it at a company code level. Then below this, you will be having the multiple field status groups. You can create multiple field status group and this ID we can maintain as, let's say it is G0, 1, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and so on and so forth. So why we need to maintain different different types of group? Why we can't use a single one? Because we'll not be doing the posting only in the single type of account. We'll be doing the posting in the general expense account, in the cost expense account, in the bank account, in the clearing account, we'll be doing the posting. Also, we'll be doing the posting in the material account. We'll be doing the posting in the material consumption account. So likewise, we need a different, different set of fields and their status under the each type of account. And that is the reason of having multiple field status groups. So how to maintain these field status group? for any of your variant so we can go with the manual one like we can create one by one field status group and we can also take all the groups from the standard one and after that we can do the fine tuning like 
at uh, for each of the group you have been given the 70 fields and those 70 fields you need to maintain a suppress required or option now if you if you go with the copy option which we also follow in the real time if we go with the copy option then already sap has done all this exercise so over and above that uh, particular setting which sap has provided to us if we want to do it for our client requirement we can do that fine tuning so in that case we can use the copy option but if for each of the 70 field for each of the field set as variant sorry for each of the field set as group we want to define from the scratch then we need to go with the create option so we'll go with both of these i'll just show you both of these options and what's the uh, difference between the two so for this we have the 7.1 step and i will just go into a system let's go with the transaction code obc4 transaction code is obc4 and you can just see here we have been given a list of field status variant fstv is not, nothing but the field status variant and in this fstv we can see we have the standard field status variant provided by the sap it is triple zero one okay and this new one i'm going to create by taking a reference of this triple zero one why because under this variant we have already these groups which sap has provided to us as a standard uh, uh, with the standard setting and if you want to see that standard setting so you can just see there are 43 groups if you want to see the field setting so for that you need to go to the each of the group and under that group you can just see you will have the segment like this you can just see the further group we have the general data additional account assignment material management payment transaction and so on and so forth so if you want to see the set of fields we have under the general data group double click on this and these are the fields we have now again as per your requirement actually this is the standard setting as per your requirement you can do that fine tuning so if already a text field is suppressed you want to require it or if it is required you want to make it as optional so that fine tuning you can do it as per your client requirement now if you want to go to the next uh, this next uh, group so you can just see we are in the general data so from here also you can go to the next group but if you want to go back and you want to specifically go to the let's say payment transaction you can double click on this and so system will just show you the set of fields we have under the payment transaction with their status like suppress required or an option now i will go back go back and also i have told you that if any of the fields we can just see on the screen you can just see these are the fields we have on the screen okay now this is on the page number one so all these fields are available if you want to view the page two and page three fields so for that you can also use this navigation button next page click on this so it will show you the next set of fields with their status then if you want to go to the page three and if you want to go back to the page two and page one so you can use the, this second option uh previous page okay. now i will just come out of here and if i want to create a new field status variant so for that i can take the copy option so how to copy it so first let's select this triple zero one click on the copy as option give here the field status variant id and the standard length provided by the sap it is up to the four character let it be the id as double two double six so this is the field status variant we are defining for the company code double two double six enter enter it is saying that system is going to also copy the dependent entities which are nothing but the field status group yes we want the system to copy those groups also press enter button and then save it now if you want to see what uh, system has copied you can just check it go to this variant double two double six go to the group you can just see these are the 43 groups we have and if you want to do any like field setting you want to do any kind of changes in the field setting so here let's say here it is the it is showing that the text is required okay if you want to make it as optional so we can also make it as optional okay so let's have here the optional then same way here we have the field status group g04 for the cost account and you can also see if there is already option so we don't need to make it optional okay so these are the like changes if you want so you can make those changes so this is the one way of uh, defining the field status variant second one is creating it from the scratch you can go to the new entry 
you need to give the id let's have here the id as it is double six fs and this is the field set as variant we have for w double six now because we are defining it from the scratch we need to create each of the group on our own so you need to click on the new entry button you will have here the blank field set as group you need to create each of the field set as group which you want to have it for your project or from for your client requirement and then you need to also do the field setting so for example this is for the general account then we have for the clearing account for the material account for the bank account bank account post okay. now in each of the field status group you need to go to the relevant group like the general data addition because by default the status is going to be optional for all your 70 fields, the status is going to be optional. When we go for the copy option, the first one, so most of the fields have been already set by the SAP as per the best practices. Okay. But here, because we are going to create it from the scratch, so for each of the field, we need to analyze that, okay, we want to keep it as suppressed, required, or optional, because optional is going to be everywhere. You can just go to this next uh, group, you will see. For all the fields, it is just showing the status, same status as optimal. Step number 7.2 and the transaction code we can use for this, it is OBC5. Transaction code is OBC5. Let's have the transaction code OBC5. Enter transaction code forward slash and OBC5. Now we can click on the position button. We have been given the set of company code we can search for the double two double six and we can just see here the blank field status variant assigned to this company code so let's have the field status variant id as double two double six press enter button save here we want to have the transport request relevant for double two double six double two double six now enter and then we can go back so step number eight, it is related to the access. It is related to the authorization. Tolerance means how much a system should tolerate a user while posting the document. So up to a specific amount, system should stop the user to do the posting. So that kind of authorization we can maintain under the tolerance group. Actually, these are the only three steps which are under the preview of SAP F5 module. Whereas or uh, by the or it is under the preview of SAP FI consultant because in the real time who should do what and for which screen he should get the access so all the kind of this authorization uh, it is to be looked after by the by the security team by the secu SAP security team so we have SAP security consultant so he will just make sure that based on the profile based on the based on the i would say uh, role of that particular user so he will she should be assigned the relevant access but here these are the three steps under which we can maintain we can uh, give the fi tolerance group that okay in the gl for a particular company code so if we will be able to make the entry up to how much amount so for that we need to maintain the tolerance group again tolerance group is the authorization it is a kind of authorization so how we can maintain it so first we need to maintain the tolerance group for the for the gl and for this we can use transaction code it is oba0 transaction code is oba0 press enter button you can just see here we have been given the company code and for this company code we have we can also see tolerance group which is blank okay so in the most of the cases it is blank why it is blank because blank means it is going to be applicable to all the users so this kind of authorization is going to be applicable to all the users for example posting of uh, let's say amount uh, 1000 so this is a default which you want to allow it to all the users for that you can create a blank tolerance group but for a particular specific group you want to have a authorization of let's say more than 10000 or 100 uh, or 1 million dollar so for that you you can create a group in that group you can pick all those user id and the same the same in this uh, set 
so whatever the user you have picked you have uh, added in that particular tolerance group so all those user would be able to do the posting up to the 100 uh, up to the 1 million dollar amount so that is the kind of uh, tolerance group we can have now you can just see here i am going to click on the new entry button click on the new entry button so for our company code we are going to create a blank tolerance group to click on the new entry button company code id is it is double two double six and the tolerance group id we want to keep it as blank if we need to create it the length is up to the four character so this is what this is the blank tolerance group we want to have it for double two double six and then we can press enter button save click on the save option now we can come we can just come out of here and we have the next step where for the employee we need to maintain the tolerance group this is a step number 8.2 transaction code we can use it is oba4 oba4 enter and click on the new entry button so since in the previous step we have maintained the group as blank we will not be doing here we will not be mentioning any value to the group so keep this field blank then we can mention here the company code id as 266 and after this to the user how much or to the employee how much posting power you want to give it so for each of the user they can do the posting up to hundred dollar this is a gl posting they can do it and for the ap posting for the vendor posting we are giving the authorization of 200 dollar we can also cross check it when we are doing the when we will start posting the document at that point of time we can also cross check if we are entering the amount more than 100 and 200 dollar what will happen then the cash discount limit we can give it as three percent press enter button and then save it enter and then we can come out of here we have step number 8.3 where it is saying that whatever the tolerance group you have assigned so you have sorry define it so that tolerance group you can assign to your user id so in our case because we have maintained a blank tolerance group so in that case what we can do we can only add the user id how to add the user id to the blank tolerance group so for this we have step number 8.3 transition code we can use it is ob57 so you can just see if you have been given the user id look let's say here you can just see there are different different user id and if you have created different different tolerance group okay so to those tolerance group you can assign the relevant user id but in our case we have we have the blank tolerance group so in this case how we can assign it so for example user id is it is 99 this is the user id and this we want to assign to the tolerance group so keep the tol tolerance group blank keep the tolerance group blank press enter button save so this is how we need to assign the user id to the tolerance group if you have any specific tolerance group you can mention that and then save it so that is the end of the step number 8.3 and it is the it related to the tolerance group now we have the step number 10 where we need to define and activate the controlling area so first of all what do you mean by the controlling area through the company code we can do the financial reporting whereas through the controlling area we can we can do the management accounting so what's the difference between the financial accounting and management accounting so through the financial accounting we can come to the nature of the expense if it is a maintenance repair salary wages or canteen so these are the kind of expense we can come to know their nature whereas with the help of management accounting we can come to know the origin of expense so where that expense is being incurred by which employee that expense is being incurred on which machine that expense is being incurred by which department or group of department by which employee or group of employee by which machine or group of machine that on that we are incurring that expense so that origin of expense we will be able to drive it through the management accounting so for the financial accounting we have fi for the management accounting we have controlling and in the controlling we have this controlling area where 
we can carry out all our controlling activities. We can define all the controlling objects. What are the controlling objects we have? So we have the internal order, cost center, profit center. So these are the controlling objects which we can maintain it under the controlling area. So this controlling area will be doing it in detail when we start doing the CO. But here because without this CO, without this controlling area, definition and activation will not be able to post the entry. That is the reason I have added this step here and we will be doing it detail in detail. But here just for the sake of posting it. So we need to do this step. So here we need to run transaction code. It is OWKP. And you can just see this is the set of the controlling area IDs we have. Now we need to define our controlling area. If you want to see the standard setting for any of the standard controlling area, so you can just see we have this triple zero one. We can double click on this and we can just see this is the ID. This is the description. This is the setting we have. Now, if you want to create your controlling area for that, you need to click on the new entry button. So click on the new entry button. So let's first come out of here. Click on new entry button. So here the length for this controlling area object, it is up to the four character could be alphanumeric. Let's have here the ID as double two double six, which is same as the company code ID. Then we can have the description. So this is the description we have for the controlling area double two double six. So this is the description we have for the controlling area double two double six. After this, you can just see we have the assignment control. In the assignment control, we have been given these two options. So first option is when you want to have a single controlling area for single company code. So this is one is to one. Then the second option we have where you want to use a single controlling area for multiple company codes. So in that case, you can go with the second option. But in order to go with the second option, you need to make sure for all your company code in which you want to have a single controlling area, your chart of accounts and your fiscal year variant. So these two objects should be same across all your company code. Then you can go with the second option for those company code. Okay. But if you want to have only one is to one. So for one controlling area, you want to have one company code. So for that, you can go with the option number one. In most, of the, in most of the scenario, in most of the real time scenario, we'll go with the option number two, where we are having a single controlling area, which we are using for multiple company code. So let's go with the second scenario. And also you will see based on the option you are selecting here. Okay. So if you are selecting option number one or option number two, then system is going to change here the currency type accordingly. Let's take example. We'll go with the option number one where my controlling area is same as my company code. Now in this currency type, if you just see the option, press F4 key. So you don't have here the multiple option. You have a single option that you have to take the company code currency. Why? Because system knows that this controlling area we are defining for the company code and in that company code, what are the currency we have? So we need to do the we need to translate or not the translate. We need to maintain the same currency data in the controlling area also. But if we'll go with the second option where we are using the controlling area for multiple company code. So in this, we have a option that we can go with the currency type. You can just see we can go with the currency type company code, which is 10. We can also go with the currency type 30, which is the group currency. We can also go with the currency type 40, which is a hard currency. We can also go with the currency type 50, which is the index based currency. So company code, you are aware that at the time of defining the company code, we give the currency that is your company code currency. What is the group currency in which you want to do the group reporting? So that is, that is going to be your group currency. For example, you have 10 legal entities and for that you want, and for each of the 10 legal entities, we are using different, different company code. For example, for the Indian company code, we are using INR for us company code. We are using USD for Canada company code. We are using CAD for uh, UK company code. We are G using GBP, but for all these 
legal entities for company good we want the group data we not the group data we want the group reporting to be done or head office reporting to be done in the group currency which may be different from your company code currency so for example whatever the data we have in irnr company code so in the real time that is going to be translated by the system into the group currency which may be usd or which may be irnr whatever we have defined as a group currency so here it is saying that whatever the whatever the currency you are using company code currency so this group currency may be different from a company code currency so this is the group currency in which you are doing the group reporting hard currency so we take any strong currency through which we can do the uh, reporting we can do the financial reporting so here this hard currency again we can define because for some country this hard currency could be different so this hard currency and index based currency so again this is used for the analysis purpose so this hard and index based currency is to be defined at a country setting level or i would say at a country level setting so this hard currency and index based currency we maintain at a country level so where we can set up all these currency so we know that company code currency we can use at the time of defining the company code where we define this group currency so for this group currency we have the option we can use transaction code scc4 let me just show you give me one second so you can just see this is the scc4 we have the transaction code where we can just see the client currency that will become your group currency so here if i just show you scc4 let me open one more screen and run transaction code s double g4 so we are working on the client id which is 800 on this server and you can double click on this whatever the currency system is showing you here that is your client currency and that will become your group currency and this group currency we can also change it in order to change it you can just see this is the option click on the change button you can double click on this so if you don't want this usd to be a group currency or to be a client currency you can change it to gpp or euro or any other currency okay then after that you need to save it so whosoever is whosoever has changed the client currency so that user id and date system is going to publish here okay so we can just see here that okay whosoever has changed this uh, currency so his user id is and user 12 and on which date this has been changed this has been changed on this date 23rd of march okay? if we change it today then our user id will be shown with the current date now i want to keep this usd as a group currency or client currency so i'll just come out of here so that is going to be a group currency this is the place where you can define your group currency now the second type of currency we have it is the hard currency where we maintain this hard currency so for this hard currency and index based currency we can use a transaction code oy01 so let's say where the transaction code oy01 you can just see here we have been given a list of countries as i just shared with you this hard Based this index based currency and hard be, hard uh, currency it is country specific so maybe for the us the hard currency and index based currency which we, we are taking so that may not be the same hard currency and, and uh, index based currency for some other country so that is the reason these are maintained at a country level so for example we have here the option for the country as us double click on this so for this you can just see this is the index based currency okay this is the euro but it doesn't mean that you can't change it you can change it also as per your requirement as per the requirement we can change it then same is for the hard currency so currently it is coming as euro but if you want to make it as gpp or you want to make it something else you can also do it so here i'm going to maintain the hard currency as gpp then the index based currency is is a euro and let's save it click on the save option and done. now we can go back 
Now, what's the difference of uh, this currency setting we have in the ECC 6.0 vis-a-vis the SAP S4 HANA? So in the ECC 6.0, we were only limited to the third three currencies. We can maintain only three currencies and these three currencies are company code, group currency and hard currency or index based currency and where we can see them or maintain them. For that, in the ECC, we have one more transaction code and it is OB22. So that I have also listed here. So here you can just see the transaction code. It is OB22. Let's use this transaction code. But here, because we are on the SAP HANA database, so on this screen, it will only allow us to display the display the setting. We can't change it or we can't add it anything. And you can also observe here, it is redirecting us to the transaction code pin sc underscore ledger where we can do the currency setting. So press enter button. So you can just see we have a list of uh, company code. And if I just press any company code, let's say the company code we have, it is double one double eight. So you can just see for the double one double eight, we have our first currency type, it is 10. And this is what company code currency. And it is coming with euro. Then we have our second currency type, it is 30. So second local currency, it is showing as 30. This is a group currency, it is USD. Then the third currency, we can just see it as a blank. So you can also take it as a hard currency. Here we can go and take the hard currency 40. Currency type is going to be 40. Name of the currency is hard currency and it will show you that name of the currency. Whatever the hard currency we are taking, whether it is GPP or anything else. So that is the view of the ECC 6.0. But in the SAP S4 HANA, so because we need to maintain all these currency setting in the pin SC underscore ledger, so it will take us to that particular screen. And on that screen, if I just show you pin underscore pin SC underscore ledger. So on this SAP S4 HANA, apart from three, three currencies, so we have been given now eight more currency, which we can we call them the additional currency option as freely defined currency where we can see them. And let's select this 0 L, go to the company code and see the same company code. We can just see the example. It is double one double eight. You can just see 10 is coming. This is for the company code currency. This 10 is the code type for the company code currency. 30 is the code or the currency type for the group currency. And next to this, you can just see we have Freely defined currency, freely defined currency, freely defined currency, three, four, five, six, and, and so on and so forth. So maximum we can maintain in the SAP S4 HANA, we can maintain up to eight currencies. Apart from these three basic currency we maintain, okay? So one is, if you just go on the right side, it will show you those standard currencies also, which we have in the ECC as well. So first currency, company code. Second currency, your group currency. Third, it is blank in this case, in this company code. But here you can just see this company code 1129. Here we have three currencies. Now, in the SAP S4 HANA, we have understood that apart from the three currency, we have the which we used to have in the ECC also. So we have been given eight more currency options, and these are the these we call them freely defined currency. So in that we can take Russian currency, Japanese currency, Chinese currency, whatever as per our financial reporting. So now if I just double click on this 1129, so you can just see here, it will show you for this company code, what is the ledger we are following? Then what is the fiscal year variant we have? What is the posting period variant we have? You go down and you can just see the name of the currency. Here you can just see, we have the currency first as it is a so it is a second currency okay because the first currency it is by default the company code currency see here 10 then we have the second currency as group currency third as hard currency which is you can also see the name so we have the gpp as a hard currency usd as a group currency and company code currency is also same as the group currency now if you go down 
we have other currencies also like the additional freely defined currency so this we can maintain the data in these currencies okay and for like if we will be having the data in these currency then from where system is getting the data for the currency translation so for the currency translation into these currencies like gpp then we have the russian ruble so the system is taking the data from the source and the source is going to be you can just see on the right side company good currency company good currency okay so this setting we will also doing for our company good so now here we have understood the currency setting okay what are the currencies option we have been given and after this here we have the classic accounting and we have the new general ledger account so this classic accounting we used to follow before the until this ecc 6.0 so in this classic accounting, what we follow, we follow the account approach. And in this account approach, what we do, actually we have different, different accounting standard. We have different, different reporting, financial reporting standards. So it can be according to US gap. It can be local gap. It can be IFRS, IAS. IAS means international accounting standard. So in order to do, in order to make a report as per the US gap. So here as per this classic accounting, following this account approach, we can maintain, we can use this set of GLs. We can follow this set of account for this kind of reporting. And for the local gap reporting, we can use another set of GL, another set of account starting from 400,000 to 499. For the IFRS, we can use this set of account for the IFRS reporting. So for the different, different kind of reporting, we can use different, different set of account. So that is under the account approach we used to have in the classic account before the ECC 6.0. In this classic, in the ECC 6.0, so that classic accounting has been replaced with the new GL accounting. So classic accounting has been replaced with the new GL accounting where what we follow, we follow the ledger approach. In that we used to have the account approach. Here we have the ledger approach. Basically we have two type of ledgers in the new general ledger accounting. One is the leading ledger and another is the non-leading ledger. The question is how many leading ledger we can have? We can have only one leading ledger and that is to be with the ID 0L provided by the SAP. We don't need to define it. It is already provided by the SAP. We can use it and this is standard for all, for all the client by default. Whereas for the non-leading ledger, we have the option that we can take it or not, not take it. But this is going to be standard. This is going to be default for all your clients. So this is client specific for non-leading ledger. This is client specific. So how many non-leading ledgers we can have? We can have 99 non-leading ledgers. And why we need these 99 non-leading ledger and if it is mandatory to maintain, this is the maximum number, okay? So maybe client is asking for two, for two non-leading ledger or five non-leading ledger or six non-leading ledger. But what is the purpose of having the non-leading ledger? So the purpose of having the non-leading ledger, it is the reporting only, financial reporting. So if you want that financial reporting to be done under for the different, different accounting standard, you can just see again, we have those accounting standard. So this first accounting standard, which is the US gap reporting. So this gap reporting, we can use it with the help of our leading ledger which is with the ID 0L. So this ledger 0L we can use for the US reporting. For the local gap reporting, we can use a different ledger and that may be a non-leading ledger. Again, for this uh, another type of reporting, we have IFRS, we have IES. So for all these kind of different, different kind of reporting. So if we want the financial data to be maintained under the different, different ledger, so we can maintain all these non-leading ledger. So now the same which we use, which we uh, use it in the ECC 6.0 new general ledger accounting, the same new general ledger accounting we are also having in the SAP S4 HANA. But in the SAP S4 HANA, this new general ledger accounting, we can use it with the ledger, standard ledger and extension ledger. So what is the standard ledger and extension ledger? Sometime it is asked in the interview. So standard ledger could be any ledger. It could be a leading ledger. It could be a non-leading ledger. But extension ledger, which is dependent on your standard ledger. 
एक्सटेंशन लेजर इज ए लेजर विच इज डिपेंडेंट ऑन योर लीडिंग और नॉन लीडिंग लेजर सो दैट इज द रीजन हेयर इट इज सेंग डेट फॉर एक्सटेंशन लेजर वी नीड ए अंडरलाइंग लेजर and this underlying ledger could be a leading or non leading ledger it is a kind of dependent ledger dependent ledger so on which ledger it is dependent it is dependent on a, either on leading or non leading so it is saying that what it is going to give us so it is going to give us that information financial information which is over and above the standard ledger how let's take example so in the standard ledger in the leading or non leading ledger we do a we have made a posting of 100 we have made a posting of 100 dollar that we have posted in the standard ledger and in the extension ledger which we are which it is a extension of this standard ledger so this extension ledger we have attached we have uh, it is dependent on the standard ledger so in this extension ledger we have specifically made a posting of 10 dollar now if i view the balance for under this standard ledger it is going to give us the balance of 100 dollar if i want to view the balance for this extension ledger it will show me 110 dollar why 110 dollar so the 100 dollar it is capturing from standard ledger and 10 dollar which we have specifically posted in the extension ledger so that is the reason we call it extension ledger and it is dependent on the underlying ledger and this underlying ledger is going to be a standard ledger we are also going to see the practical in the system so now here it is saying that we have this currency setting which we were just checking in the controlling area so i will just go back to the controlling area screen so this is the controlling area screen now in this you can just see we have the option that we can go with the company code currency we can take this group currency hard currency so for your group reporting for your controlling area reporting which kind of currency you want to use So in most of the cases, as I just shared with you, we go with the thirty. That is the group currency. So let it be the thirty group currency. And you can just see system is capturing or automatically USD as a group currency. So from where it is capturing from your SCC four screen client currency. Over there, had I made it as GBP, system would have shown you here GBP only. Okay. So from that screen, it is just determining the currency. then after this under the other setting we need to link the chart of account so the chart of account for this controlling area we have it is 2266 and fiscal year variant we are taking 66 and then we have the cost center standard hierarchy again we will be doing it in detail when we will start working on the cost center accounting but here for the sake of posting the entry and for for the sake of maintaining this field information we are giving the information as h underscore Double to double six. So we'll talk about it in detail when we'll start working on the cost center accounting. So let's press center button. It will give you this message that standard hierarchy it doesn't exist. Do you want to maintain? Click on the yes option. Then click on the save option. Enter yes. After this, you need to go on the left side. Press center button. so you go on the left side you have two option first assignment of company code second activate your component control indicators let's first double click on the assignment of company code new entry here whatever the company code you want to link to this controlling area you can mention those company code over here since we have the single company code so i am going to mention here company code id 2266 So now I'm going to save it. Click on the save option. It is giving you a notification that you have added a new currency type thirty for your group reporting. Okay, press enter button. Again, press enter button. Now we need to double click on this activate slash control indicator and click on the new entry button. so what next we need to do so you can just see the title bar it is saying that we need to activate our controlling area so we have defined it but it is yet to be activated so without activation we can't do any kind of fi posting click on the new entry button and we need to give here the start year from which year this controlling area should be activated let it be this year 2024 
and in this what are the controlling component you can just see these are called controlling component we have the cost center order management means internal order so these are the controlling components so which component you want to activate let it be the cost center and order we want to maintain as a active component and then we can save it click on the save option press enter button so this will give you a message that control indicator in the controlling area okay press enter button and then enter now we can go back you can just see by default system has activated it till the year 999 now we can come out of the screen. So we are with this step, we are able to define and activate the controlling area. So we have the step number 11, which is related to the numbering. The way we maintain the numbering for the FI posting, same way we can also maintain the number range for our CO posting. For the CO document, we need also the number range. So how to maintain that number range for that CO account posting? For the CO posting, I would say we can use this transition code KANK and through which we can maintain the number range for the controlling. So here you can click on this copy option, copy sub object, click on this and you can give the reference of your standard company code ID here. It is triple zero one and you can mention your company code ID, which is in our in our case, it is double to double six, and then click on the enter button. Again, press enter button. So system has copied all these number ranges for the from the controlling area triple zero one to double to double six. If you want to see all those number ranges which system has copied from triple zero one to double to double six, you can view them. In order to view them, you can mention your controlling area here and then click on the display in term so you can just see these many number ranges system has copied from the standard controlling area id triple zero one and added to our controlling area which is double two double six where we can just see all these number ranges then after this number range assignment in the controlling so we have the next step step number 12 where we need to maintain the version 